whatever you say will get judged in an extreme way <laughs> Well, there are good reasons for that for a whole lot of people. There are lots of dead bodies and lots of bereaved families. So there is emotion, strong emotions. But uh, there are problems and there are solutions. When we invest in problems, problems multiply. It would be wise to invest in solutions. But in a democratic nation, when you take everybody's opinions and emotions and considerations, it's very difficult to move in any one direction because it's always trying to move in ten different directions. But I feel this wouldn't be a very difficult problem to solve if there is an abstinence from daily violence that's unleashed in the form of terror. The old philosophy of thousand cuts is still being executed. When that's going on, it becomes very difficult to even talk about a solution. I think that's where we are right now. Aspiring for peace is definitely in everybody's heart. Aspiring for peace looks like a noble endeavor. But practical situations have always been handled in different ways. It's not just today's issue, forever human conflicts have been happening. Because when somebody is aspiring for peace, somebody else takes advantage with one incisive violent act. I think between the two nations, enough of those things have happened. Question of trusting each other just doesn't arise right now. So if you ask me, because when it comes to common people, their aspirations of, re of economic well-being is one of the important things. As a region, we have thirty-three percent of the world's malnourished. So, uh, the largest number of stunted children in the region, in the world, is in that region. So, individual people and families, if you take them, their aspiration will be very economic. I feel putting economics as a front foot is the best way to do it. I think India made a serious effort in giving this most favored nation status to our western neighbor, but that did not yield any result as such. Today, it's sort of been withdrawn by putting two hundred percent, whatever you call it, a cess or a tax or whatever it is. So, talking peace is a, a very fashionable thing. Everybody talks about it. But when it is being declared by the proponents of this violence very clearly, our goals are not geographic. That is, Kashmir is not the goal. Once we liberate Kashmir, we will liberate the rest of India. When these things have been clearly stated, I don't see how you can talk with the same people endlessly peace because it's ridiculous. So I feel the region has to make efforts to bring an economic prosperity. I think if the rest of the countries show economic prosperity, I'm sure people in Pakistan don't aspire for anything else, they also aspire for their well-being. It is just that certain forces in every nation behave like they represent every human being in that country, but it is not true. We're still not in that level of human consciousness where all boundaries and borders can be just wiped out and human beings just embrace each other and live, there's no such love affair going on. 
Okay <laughs> Still, national identities, religious identities, various other kinds of ideological identities set us against each other. It is... Uh, it is as simple as it is, but when it comes as to how it manifests on the ground, it's too complex. It's not something you can solve like that. So, in the making of a nation, in the making of a nation, one important thing is the sovereignty of the nation. Because nation exists only because of its borders. This may be an unpopular thing to say in United States right now, but you call something a nation, only the first and foremost is the geographical border, isn't it? Well, people can go this way, that way, people can change their language, people can change their religion, people can change their beliefs and ideologies, but it's a geography which is a first dimension of making of a nation. So this sovereignty should not have been dragged for so long after independence. It's a serious mistake. It should have been settled immediately. But unfortunately, they did not settle it for... I mean, I don't want to make a... Uh, political post-mortem now, but it's a serious mistake not to settle the sovereignty of the nation, not to fix the boundaries and say, this is it. Still, it is a line of control. It's not the national borders, it is still a line of control which is always out of control. And uh, there are various things, I don't want to give a political commentary now. So you're asking about the mindset. The mindset is like this. This has been in many ways put across. They are fighting for what they believe in. You are trying to fight for what you believe in. And this will go on endlessly, you understand? Either you must change your belief system or they must change their belief system. And that doesn't look like in your future, all right? That doesn't look like that. But either you must have the wisdom to end the enmity. You must kill the enmity. You must have that wisdom. If there is no room for that wisdom, unfortunately, it will naturally translate into killing the enemy. It will naturally go there. Whether you li Am I propounding this? No. It will naturally get there whether you like it or you don't like it. So just because somebody lives across the border, do you want to kill them? Definitely not. But at the same time, do you want to protect what you see as this nation? This is an unfortunate dilemma of being human. If you were an animal, anybody crosses your boundary, enters your territory, you just kill him. All right? Hello? But this is the dilemma of being human. Somebody crosses your boundary, you... you may have to kill him, but you don't really want to kill him. This is the struggle of being human. This struggle must be there in a human being always. If this struggle goes away, you will become an animal. This struggle must exist within us, but still acting decisively for the larger well-being of a nation has to happen. Why I'm talking about a nation is for me, nation is not a political entity, nation is not my nationalism, I, I don't belong to that. For me, nation is the largest amount of population you can address right now. If you want to bring well-being, you cannot address the globe. Hello? Yes. You cannot address the whole globe just like that. It is not within your means to address the globe. The best thing you can address right now, the largest human entity you can address right now is nation. If you go down, maybe there are states, maybe there are religions, maybe there are castes and creeds and all kinds. Don't go there. Address the nation because it's the largest segment of humanity you can address right now. In that context, sovereignty of the nation becomes of prime importance. Well, what has to be done has to be done, but we must have pain in our heart. Even when we cause damage to somebody who is a threat to us, we must have some pain in our heart, otherwise we will lose our humanity.